All right, welcome everybody to the Wednesday of week 15 or something like that. Uh, in the uh, 12 o'clock session, one of the students uh, asked about uh, quantum computing and how quantum computers worked. And my answer to her was uh, magic. Um, I literally uh, am not smart enough to understand it. So we watched uh, a couple of videos uh, by a guy by the name of Shore, who uh, has an algorithm that I'm aware of, um, Shore's algorithm, that allows you to factor prime numbers in order, I think, in cube time versus exponential time if you have a quantum computer. And uh, how it works, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not smart enough to, to hack that, so I'll just say it's magic for now. Um, it, 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 it did remind me of a movie that I saw in the 90s called Sneakers, which uh, was about a tiger team. A tiger team is a group of security professionals that are hired by like a bank or something to try to hack the bank. And so they're like white hat hackers or whatever like that and uh, they discover a magical box, uh, so to speak. It's not magic, but it can, it can break RSA encryption. And so, you know, essentially, uh, this came out at around the same time that Shor's algorithm was discovered. I don't know which preceded which, but basically that was the notion, was that this researcher, you know, it wasn't Shor, but like, we'll call him Shor, S-H-O-R, um, made this box and it could decrypt bank communications and things like that. And all of a sudden, all these people got really interested in it, like the NSA and like the KGB, because this is back during the, actually maybe it was after the fall of the Soviet Union, I don't know, it was around there. But all these people were like fighting over this one box, the researcher gets assassinated, and then there's like this mad scramble to get this box that could decrypt anything. And so that was kind of the premise of, of that movie, and maybe we'll do that at the end of the year party, because there is the end of the year coming up, we've got a couple weeks left. Uh, we don't do finals in this class because this is all competency exams. Uh, the last uh, week, um, there will be competency exams available if you have any takes left on them. You can do that 15, 16, 17. That's the end of the school year. So on the 20th, we will have an end of the year party, and uh, that'll be in person, AC1114. We'll play Smash Brothers and Halo and Age of Empires and things like that. Age of Empires is a new DLC dropping, I think, today or tomorrow, something like that. And uh, maybe we'll we'll play some Age 2. I'll have to practice a little bit. Um, Jackbox. We definitely do Jackbox as well. So that was the uh, previous class. So uh, let's talk about some new stuff today. Age of Empires 2. Yeah, AOE 2. Uh, petition to play it. Among Us during finals exam. We don't have a finals exam, but you're you're welcome to play Among Us uh, as well at the end of the year party. So, um, um, right, uh, um, Aaron was asking uh, me to write code, I think, or something like that in the previous class. So, let me uh, let me show you just how quickly I can write code. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> all right, it's called hacker typer. If you ever are at work and you want to look like you're you're coding away, just bring that up and just pound on the keyboard. You'll look smart. All right, so we're gonna be talking today about a new data structure called a tri t r i e, and uh, we'll also be talking about the homework assignment. Homework assignment's due on Friday, and uh, basically the um, the main thing for the homework assignment is you're going to be you're going to count the number of letters, right? So you're going to be given, uh, let's see, one, one. So you type in a a a a b b b b b b b b b b b c, and so at first you're going to uh, do what's essentially called a radix sort or something like that, where you um, you get the letters, you you go to the right bucket, and you increment in the bucket. Right, and a lot of students have been asking me questions like, "All right, how do you sort that by count?" Right, uh, because the the location of the bucket is the ASCII code. Right, and so if you were to move the nine, the corresponds to capital B, which is ASCII code sixty six. So array index sixty six has the value nine in it. It's an array of integers, and the answer is you can't. If you sort it, then you uh, lose the positioning, and you can't you can't do it. So what you have to do is make a class, you know, as we do at CSI 41. So you make a class, and the class will have two things in it, a character 
an account. And then as you uh, read the data in, uh, there's a couple different ways you do it, but basically you read the, you read the um, letters in and what, and what the way I did it was once I have all the buckets done, then I go through all the buckets and, in, and any of them that uh, have a non-zero count, I create a capital C character for it. I put it into a set and um, I have a um, spaceship operator defined on it. Spaceship operator, if you can't remember, it will automatically generate comparison operators less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, equal to, and not equal to operators are all done using the spaceship operator. And if you say equals default, then C++ makes all the comparison operations for you. And it's really nice because uh, there's one trick though, which is that you have to have the, the member variables uh, of the class in the order you want them sorted in. So this is gonna sort first by count. And if there's a tie, it's gonna sort on the character. If I were to switch this around like that, then, uh, oh shoot, um, I have to switch this around down here as well. Because they're, they're in the opposite order now. I'm, I'm just using the built-in assignment operator, right? To make these things, count, square bracket, like that. A, 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 B, 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 C, C, F, D, Q. And you, you'll see that it sorts by count, right? If you put the count first, it sorts by count. Uh, if you put um, the letter first, it sorts by letter, right? And so right now I move the character up to the top. So it's sorting the characters greatest to smallest because I, I have it sorting greatest to smallest because I wanted the greatest character count first. So if I come back up into here, so the layout of the class actually matters, right? Especially for things like this. In CSI 45, you'll learn other places where it matters as well. But um, this, uh, the spaceship operator, uh, the order of the member variables is the order it sorts by. Sort by count, if there's a tie, sort by the letter, which is what you want for the summer sentence. Uh, I wrote a double F arrow operator for it. If you don't know how to do this, um, even though it's less typing, you can always make a less than operator. Oops. That and uh, the lesson operator uh, in this case will say if they are tied on the count, sort by the character, otherwise, sort by the count, right? Which is the same thing this is doing here. All right, so this is the whole program, by the way, right? So that's, that's basically the whole thing. Um, I'm not putting it up on public because uh, this is the entire assignment. Uh, but this this is literally the whole, yeah, this is the whole thing on the screen at once. That's that's your homework due on Friday. Uh, not quite, because you have to open up a file and you got to check for extended ASCII characters, things like that. Extended ASCII characters are values greater than 127. The um, thing about ASCII is that it is a seven bit system, which is uh, kind of weird, right? Like it's, um, it's not often you'll see something that is uh, seven bits, right? Like it's usually a eight or 16 or 32 or something like that. So ASCII, the American something standard something, are you, that's ah, locked, okay. So if you have an, an ASCII character, like the letter A, which is 65, right? Sixty-five, yeah. Um, so if you have the letter A, single quote A, and single quote A, by the way, is not the same thing as double quote A. Double quote A is a pointer to a block of read-only memory. This thing here is a const char pointer. Okay, this thing here is basically an int, <laughs> right? Single quote A does an ASCII table lookup. This is the number sixty-five, and it can be used interchangeably with the number sixty-five. Um, if you see out uh, double quote int single quote a, this will print 65 to the screen. If you do this with double quotes, it will print the memory address of this read-only block of memory. Not the same thing at all. Single quote is literally just an ASCII table lookup. And if you want to go the other way, if you if you have the number 65 and you want to print a, um, you do so by saying char 
you know, 65 or the variable or whatever, and that will print the letter A to the screen. So that's how you go back and forth between ints and chars. They're basically the same thing. So a char is really just an 8-bit int, right? So an 8-bit int is called a char, you know, at least on our system. Chars don't have to be 8 bits, but on uh, most mainstream systems, uh, characters are, are 8 bits. Now, what's weird about this is that this is actually a signed value. Uh, in other words, there could be positive values for chars and there could be negative values for chars. And that's weird, right? Because you don't think of there being a negative value. You know, if you look at the ASCII table, right? There's no negative values on here. It starts at zero, right? And it goes up to 127. It's because ASCII is a seven bit system. So on some of the test cases though, the test cases will actually give you a negative value, okay? Uh, or, you know, an extended ASCII character. Back in the 1970s and 80s, uh, people didn't like the fact that they were transmitting eight bits, but only using seven of them. And so they used that, eight, that eighth bit for a variety of different purposes. Uh, Windows and DOS had their own extended ASCII table. Uh, VT100 uh, by DEC, that they had different what are called code pages that would allow you to use uh, French characters or German characters and things like that. You could switch which code, code page you were using. Basically, there's no standardization, though, for that eighth bit, what it's used for. Nowadays, there is something called UTF-8. And UTF-8 is a superset of... It is a superset of ASCII, actually. So uh, if you don't ever use that high bit, UTF-8 can read ASCII because ASCII is a subset of UTF-8. First 127 symbols or code points in UTF-8 are ASCII. It's literally the same. You can open up a text file written in American and uh, and UTF-8 web pages will display it. But if that high bit is, is set, if that eighth bit is set, then uh, it will move from a one byte to a two byte to a three byte to up to a four byte system. And so, uh, so a, a Unicode character for you know, the poop emoji or the devil horns or whatever uh, is somewhere between um, one and four bytes long. And then there's multiple, there, there's these weird, like Unicode, like, is kind of strange, to be perfectly honest. Like, you can do multiple code points and they'll get glued together into, like, female plus astronaut. We'll do the female astronaut symbol or something like that. Like, it, it gets really weird and wonky and we're not going to worry about it. Other than the fact that if you're given UTF-8 code, your code should not crash. Why does your code crash? Well, if you have a table of size 256, right, and you use the ASCII code to go to the bucket, right? So if you type in the letter A, you go to bucket 65, and if you had a two there before, then you increment it to three, and that's gonna count how many A's you've seen. You, we've now seen our third A. If you do this with a char, which is a signed character, you will get a negative value for any of the extended ASCII or UTF-8 characters that aren't ASCII because, because chars range from the value of a char goes from negative 256 to positive, uh, sorry, that's completely wrong, from negative 128 to positive 127. There are 256 values, I should say. And they go from negative 128 to 127. So if somebody puts in an extended ASCII character, that's treated as a negative. And you're going to index out of bounds over here and probably segfault, hopefully segfault. If not, you're going to be reading and writing to random blocks of memory that might contain your credit card information and things like that. So you uh, do not want to use a char to index into an array because chars can be negative. Okay. What you want to use instead is an unsigned char. And what you really want to use is a u int 8 underscore t, because then you know it's unsigned and you know that it is 8 bits. An unsigned char does not technically have to be 8 bits. I have worked on systems where chars are not 8 bits. If you're working in like the Im embedded world uh, with DSPs and things like that, sometimes they have 200, 256 bit chars. So things like that, it's kind of weird. So unsigned chars range from 0 to 255. Okay, and if you do this, then it will index properly into your array. You need some Swiss chocolate, girl? Yeah. Oh, there's two left. One for you and one for me. Which one do you want? Uh, you wanted the light one, I think, so I'll take the no, dark no, one. No, 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 sure, so which one do I'll you take want? the dark one. I had a light one last time. Do you want it? Is this the one you wanted? Nah. Mm. 
Which one? Which one do you like better? Hmm. I like both. I like the light one better. One of my former students just got into a Swiss school, St. Gallen, which is um, the top business school in Europe. I wrote him a letter of recommendation. It's all because of me. And so he brought me back some chocolates and things. Your mischievous little plan to get chocolate. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's good stuff. Alright, yeah. let me teach you. So yep. it's the best um, business company in the world? Business college in Europe, not in the world. Okay, so is it like what is inheritance? The best in the world. Huh, that's a good question. Um, what is the best business school in the world? Hmm. Oh, let's look at it. Ate it. <laughs> All on purpose. Killing me, girl. All right. Harvard best business school. Chicago, okay. Pennsylvania Warden School. Northwestern, Stanford, Harvard, yeah. Yeah. MIT is surprisingly famous for its econ and business program. Look at those costs. Seventy eight thousand per year, girl. Seventy eight thousand dollars per year. You know what? If students were willing to pay me seventy eight thousand dollars per year, I would take like four students a year and just teach them full time, you know, and I would make a lot of money. <laughs> It's absolutely criminal that they charge that much money because there is no way at all they're getting that, that value for their money. I'm sorry. At least in terms of like instruction. I mean, these are like the best of the best. They're the best of the best. But, you know, like Berkeley pays an adjunct twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a year. That's a nice So campus. one student in your class pays for the adjunct. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, maybe two because you have to divide them up among four classes. You know, if there's anything more than two students in the class then that are paying full full tuition, um, then it's all the rest of it goes to the college. You know, and you look around at these classes that have 500 students in it. You know. um, strangely wholesome. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not inheritance. It's just um, a superset. Right, and it's quite deliberate that UTF-8 is a superset of ASCII. So you just feed it a, a text file in ASCII, it'll read it, um, and then if you use the high bit, then it will um, go into Unicode mode. So, yeah, so the high bit, by the way, um, a little preview of CSI 45, the way that this stuff works is uh, you got zero, one, zero, 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 Five, six, seven, eight. This is the ones bit, the twos bit, the fours bit, eights bit, sixteens bit, thirty twos bit, sixty fours bit, and hundred twenty eights bit. If it's unsigned, if it's a signed char, like a regular char, that's actually a negative one twenty eight. A little preview of C side forty five for you. This is how binary numbers are held. Regular values are signed. If positive and negatives, that high bit there is negative one twenty eight. All the other values are positive. If it's an unsigned, that's positive 128. That's the only difference. So, uh, anyone know what ASCII code this is? You see grads are unionized, they expect some changes. You get to sit in 300 person lecture halls, yeah. And, and, the, and the poor adjunct makes 24,000 a year, something like that. And they're pulling in, uh, let's see, if you're in four classes, then a quarter of 300 students, let's say 80 students, 80 times 60,000. Oh man, my my brain can't go that high. How much? How much is that? Eight times sixty thousand. I'm six hundred thousand. Sixty. No, it was no, no, sixty-five thousand no. times huh? eighty students. Five point two million. So the class is pulling in five point two million, and they're paying the adjunct twenty thousand a year. All right. That's one class. <laughs> Shouldn't that be easy? Yeah, it's great for the school. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, like, doing the math. And you have the adjuncts, like, living in cars, you know. Like, yeah, I mean, sure, grad students live in cars, but that's a grad student. That's what the grad student life is all about. It's about being poor and hungry and eating ramen and working hard and, you know. It's yeah. all part of the experience. But the yeah. professors, man, the professors can't afford a place to live in Berkeley, you know. All right, take this girl. 
let alone you know Boston, let alone these other places. So, yeah, the whole the whole, the whole adjunct situation in academia is like a. I could I could rant on that for a while. Okay. Uh, are you going for two's compliment? I just did. This is called two's compliment. That actually looks good. Mm -hmm. The ramen. Yeah. So there you go. There's called that's called two's compliment, and you'll learn that in CSI forty five more fully. Okay, UCSD president got a hundred fifty thousand dollar raise. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say if, if the president made one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, I'm actually fine with that because you know, like the the president of a major college, one hundred fifty thousand a year, that's quite reasonable. Oh no, one hundred fifty thousand dollar raise. Okay, yeah, they raise, and they get a free house. Yeah, and it's a nice house too. I actually got invited to the UCSD president's house. It's on the cliffs overlooking uh, the ocean. You know, in La Jolla. It's a nice property, um, and I didn't go because I didn't really feel like socializing with people that day. I probably should have. That would have been that would have been a cool experience. Um, but I was just like, eh, I don't really have anything to say to the guy, so I, I just didn't go. Um, I mean, even if I could afford a house like that, I probably wouldn't because I just want to like I want to live somewhere like this. I don't really like living on luxury places like that. Late stage capitalism says Ben Court. This isn't capitalism. This is the University of California. It's government. It's all, um, you know, it's the. California state government. It's the largest honestly, employer in the state, in fact. Honestly, if I, even if I could afford something like that, I would I would be like, no, I, 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 maybe like a vacation home is fine, but I don't really want to spend all my time just looking at it over the ocean. Just okay. like staring for dolphins, mm -hmm. even though they're not even there. All right. Sounds, sounds fair to me. All right. Let's move on. So, so what do we do? Unless it's actually nice. You so, know, I'd actually prefer a, an aquarium room. So what we do is, uh, there's a lot of different ways of doing this. You can use a heap, you can use a set, you can use a vector and call sort on it. Um, so, uh, after you've counted all of your, your letters, then, uh, I just use a set. And so I named it after shore, um, because we were talking about the quantum, the quantum guy. And, uh, I'm just for every bucket that has a value in it. I make a character capital C character that has, you know, a count in a, that's how many times that letter appeared. That's the letter. And then I just stuff it into the binary search tree. And then I print out the binary search tree. Um, I've got a little double left arrow operator to find here. And that's it, that's your whole assignment. So you gotta handle extended ASCII characters and you gotta open up a file, but really this assignment is supposed to just kind of be free points for you all at the end of the semester, right? I'm just trying to give all of you 10 free points, enjoy, right? Like here's the answer basically, so make it work, all right? Unfettered capitalist buy out governments. <laughs> uh, it's it's all it's government, you know. Like the University of California is the largest employer in California, and it's a governmental agency essentially. You know, the uh, uh, Fresno, the, the state system, you know, is the largest uh, college system in the world. I think the CSU system is the largest in the world. Um, Fresno City College is the oldest. Community college in California. Did you guys know that? FCC is like the OG. It's the original community college. So. Administration is a scam. Yeah, you know what? I, I would be willing to be the president of UCSD for a mere 300000 a year. I, you know, save him some money. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Uh, so SGSU is a state. Uh, FCC is the first community college in California. So that makes sense to all of you. So you can't sort the buckets, right? Because if you sort the buckets, the position erases the, like it goes away, right? Because the position is the character value. And so you have to like copy it into like something else, keeping the count and the character. And then you can put it into a priority queue. You can put it into a set. You can put it into a vector and then call sort on the vector. Either way is fine. Either way will work. Okay. Uh, all right. So that's part one, histogram. Cool. Um, 125000 dollars race. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll do it for whatever he makes, I'll I'll do it for half. <laughs> yeah. It you know, it's 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 you know, you, you can say what you want about capitalism, but it's not like government's any better, you know. Do you know how much San Francisco spends on like helping the homeless every year? Works out to like Sixty or seventy thousand dollars per person, and yet they're still homeless. So, yep, uh, you'll do it for a quarter. <laughs> yeah, uh, 
you know, LA was building condos for homeless people at around six hundred thousand dollars per unit. You know, it's like they could do better. They can do better than that. All right. So uh, let's move on to a new data structure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, San Francisco is just a poorly managed city. All right. Um, All right, so let's talk about tries. Okay, so let's see. This formatting is all screwed up. Let's see. Let's see. All right. There we go. Problem solved. All right, so a try is a data structure where the position on the tree indicates the value of that spot on the tree. Just like how uh, when we had our uh, histogram for, with our buckets, right? You know, this bucket, you know, with a count of seven, because it's in position 65, that means letter A. And this one has a count of two, because it's in position 66, it's the letter B. In the same concept, and that's kind of why I'm transitioning this way, and the same concept, the position of a node in a tree called a try, the position of it indicates its value. And so you don't actually store the value of it anywhere. You just have a tree, and based on the structure of the tree, you can tell what values it holds. So you can actually save quite a bit of memory that way. All right, so here is, uh, here is a try holding different words. And so it's got, uh, that's a word there, two, letter A is a word, Letter I is a word, N is a word, N, N is a word, 10 is a word, Ted is a word, and T is a word. This is not a word, that's not a word, okay? And so these letters are actually not stored anywhere in the tree, in the tri, okay? Instead, what you have is you have a root node, and it's not a binary tree, it is a binary tree with 26 kids, let's say, one for each letter of the alphabet. And by default, they're all null. I'm not gonna draw the null pointers. But let's say you got root here. Here's root. And um, I say, all right, um, uh, let's say I'm parsing all the words in the English language, right? And I start off with the letter A, all right? It's right here. Right? So the first uh, pointer, which is null right now, will turn into a new node that corresponds to the letter A. And I'm gonna, give it a count of one, because we've seen the letter A one time. And uh, maybe I'm parsing Hamlet or something, and the next time I encounter the letter A, I come back in here and update the count. And so this is just kind of like how many times each of these words has been seen. Um, I then find the word apple, okay? So I start off at root, and I, I have the word apple, A-P-P-L-E. First letter is A, I have a little temp pointer here. The temp pointer starts at root, and I say, hey, does A exist? It does, okay, cool and then temple point at A. And then we look at P. And so this guy's got uh, 26 uh, kids. The P pointer is currently null, so we're gonna make that one. This one corresponds to P. And then the temp pointer now points down here. Now we move on to the second P in Apple, all right? Does that P pointer exist? Nope, all right, let's make that one too. All right, make the L pointer. Make the E pointer. And so this uh, node here is tagged as a leaf for the letter A, and this one down here with the letter E on it is tagged as a leaf as, all, as well, and it's got a count of one. And then if I ever encounter apple again, the pointer will run down the tree, move in the A direction, the P direction, the P direction, the L direction, the E direction. Oh cool, the thing exists already, so we're gonna just update our count here from one to two. And at the end of the day, we're gonna have a histogram of words, and also we're gonna have the entire English uh, language, um, so to speak, you know, if we do it on a whole dictionary, but if you do it on Hamlet, you're gonna have at least every word in Hamlet in the tree, representing every word that has been seen in Hamlet without actually storing any of the strings themselves. All we have is a tree. And because we can iterate down the tree, we can actually enumerate every possible word in the English language without any of these things storing a character or a string or anything. Just based on the structure of the tree, 
And we have like a little member variable saying this is a leaf. And we have another variable with an int that's a count. Um, not technically necessary, but it's useful. You know, if you're gonna be doing like predictive text, right? So let's say that you're on your phone and you type in TE on your phone. Well, if this is your try, then uh, it could say, well, this might autocomplete to T, TED, or 10, but 10 is the most common word. So let's put that on the left-hand side there. And uh, the second most common is TED. So let's put that on the right-hand side and then TE in the middle in case you just want to type TE for some reason. And if you do that, then that gets added as a leaf node, right? Because uh, every time you hit return on something, it actually saves that into your autocomplete settings. And so by doing things like this, if you type in IN, it would pop up IN as one uh, possibility, IN N as another, right? As uh, you can just tap it and it fill in for you. And so by having the count, you know which the most likely uh, words to autocomplete are, right? You don't have to do it, but, um, but it's useful. Code completion. Yeah, code completion. You'll you'll have you'll have all the variables, you know, and function names and things like that. So you start typing, and as you type, like if you type in T E, you know, one one at a time, it reads the T, and then there's a little temp pointer pointing here, and then it'll move down in the T direction. You type in the letter E, it moves in this direction. You type in N, it moves in this direction, and then there's only one thing to autocomplete at that point, right? If the try was bigger, it might have ten cent. You know, the Chinese technology company, it might have Tenet, uh, like, you know, the Tenets of my belief, that kind of stuff, David Tenet, things like that. And whatever the most popular words are will will show up on your little autocomplete bar there. Okay. If you type int x, then it will uh, try, we'll check to see if it's trying to assign that to 10. I don't, I don't know what that means. Uh, Hughes tries to parse math equations. Now, uh, math equations are, are um, the, the, you're going to use probably a parse tree for that. Um, or you can use like a stack and push things onto the stack and stuff like that. It is a BST of vectors. It is a not a it is not a binary search tree. It is just a tree. It's an n array tree. Okay, so it is a n array tree where n is the number of letters in the language. In this case, I'm using twenty six as an example because I'm not going to worry about the difference between uppercase and lowercase, and I'm also not going to worry about apostrophes and you know exclamation marks and things like that okay so um so that is a try and um i can show you how to implement it even if you want uh here's okay here's another one let's go through this so uh people in chat i've been talking for a while my fingers smell like chocolate um what words exist in the English language given this try. We've just parsed a dictionary. It's not a very large dictionary. On chat, just go ahead and post some of the words that uh, the code has processed to this point in time. I drink my coffee. Bad? Bad is not in there. No. Bat is in there. You calling it Dork Garcia? <laughs> dorm, dorm is in there. Do, do is in there. Rest. I don't see rest in there. Send, yeah, send is in there. Yeah. Doll, yeah, doll is in there. Yeah, so basically every the the star indicates there is a leaf node, a little boolean, it's tagged as true. Yep. So. Se is not a word. You notice how there's not a star on the E in se, S-E. So that is not a word. But those nodes exist. And what's really nice about this is that you can see that a lot of the words in the English language share um, substrings, right? So like the word cat. Do you know how many words in the English language start with cat? Catapult, cataphract, cat. <laughs> technically catastrophe uh, catastrophic caterpillar cathartic yeah uh, category yeah a lot of words that start with cat and so you don't have to store cat over and over and over again because they share the same substrings at the beginning 
the try will eliminate all of it'll eliminate all of that redundant uh, storage of data, and so it just stores the tree, the, you know, the tr the shape of the tree. None of those characters actually appear in the in the try anywhere. Okay. Catch cattle, c Catholic, yeah, 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 it's good. There's a lot of words. I think uh, what was the guy's name that did the pun fantasy, the Xanth novels, Piers Anthony. He had a whole bunch of uh, he had a whole bunch of uh, puns based on cat, cat uh, cathode ray television, <laughs> catnip. Yeah. Okay. So you guys understand? So let's let's go ahead and implement this on the server. All right. Any vector? Probably not. Algorithm? Probably not. All right. So we'll start off by just reading in a string at a time. We'll do a while, cn still valid. Um, string s is equal to read. And type in a type in a word, put to put. Okay. If s is equal to quit break. Otherwise we'll just see it out. Whenever you're writing code, you should always be testing, testing, testing. Write your code, test it. Okay. Quit. All right. Make sure. Damn it. <laughs> Just locked off. Uh, too fast on the draw. All right. Uh, yeah. All right. Control D uh, does does work as well. Okay. Catacombs. Yeah, it's good. All right, so now we need to make a class. We're gonna make a class. We'll do proper class design this time, not a struct like my lazy self usually does. And so we're gonna need, we're gonna have a subclass inside of it called node, each node of the tree. Basically, each spot on the try is, is a node as usual. You know, like basically, uh, yeah, one of these things is a node. So each node is gonna have a count if we care about that, I guess we do account. It'll have uh, a boolean indicating if it's a leaf or not, if that's a word. Because you can have, you know, leaf, you know, nodes on the way. It's not really a leaf then. Am I a word? Am I a valid word? I don't know what you want to call it. Because uh, the do is technically a word, even though it's got kids. It's not technically a leaf node. You call it a complete word. I'm a word. I don't know. Bool is word is false, and yeah, int count equals zero. If we want to keep track of that, it's useful for different purposes. And then we'll have twenty six um, pointers, one for each letter. We're only going to handle uh, uppercase letters, so probably we should uppercase it here. Um, S dot begin, S dot end, S dot begin. Go. And that, that works. Shouldn't work. Let's try that out. Interesting. I didn't include the right header file for this, so all right, I'll take it. Um, so transform is a standard library function that says starting at the beginning of the string, going to the end of the string, where, where are you gonna write the data to, the beginning of the string, uh, it will call the function called to upper on each letter of the character. So this is a longer way <laughs> of uppercasing a string than what I normally do, which is uh, for every character in the string, string is equal to two upper, that, sorry, the character is equal to two upper of that character. So it's more typing, uh, but you feel more STD-ish, I guess, as the result of it. So, um, why the colon colon to upper? Because to upper isn't a function. <laughs> uh, it, as, as a great example of horrible, um, or not horrible decisions, but de just decisions that come back to haunt you uh, from, you know, 50 years ago. To upper is usually implemented as a macro it's like hashtag define 
to upper x as if x is greater than uh, a and x is less than equal to z, then x is equal to x bitwise anded with the not of 32, otherwise x. And so what this will do is every time you type in two upper, it will literally do a textual search and replace, replacing the word two upper with that code right there. And that was a way that back in the days, they didn't have to have the function call overhead to do, uh, to do a two upper function. And it was marginally faster. The trouble is you can't pass a macro to a standard library function. It's not a function. It actually doesn't exist according to the C++ compiler. The C++ compiler doesn't even see two upper because it gets textually substituted. Um, you know, if you say, uh, you know, uh, char c is equal to two upper, you know, lowercase a, uh, this will, you know, that'll, that'll do that. It's probably ambiguous because of the, uh, yeah, of the thing. Uh, but, uh, okay, whatever. But it's basically something like that. And so it's, you can't actually pass a macro to a function that takes a, a function pointer. So this actually has to call the, uh, um, You have to call this, which is the function version of two upper, which is one of those just horrendous things that is just the result of legacy, you know, fifty-year-old legacy. So, all right. um, and so why did I why did I not it with thirty-two? Why did I end it with a not of thirty-two? To, to uppercase it. Which library is it in? It's in uh, CC type. Um, because, look, A is 65, right? Lowercase A is 97. So the only difference between capital A and lowercase A is the 32 bit is set. And so if you clear the 32's bit off a lowercase character, it becomes an uppercase character. So, hey, bitwise operations. There you go. Disgusting, I know. All right. So let's uppercase it and call it A. Okay, so that's all working. Uh, job security. <laughs> all right. Uh, it, yeah, CC type, CC type. Okay, so then every node is going to have 26 pointers to the children. Now, we could do it with a node pointer array like this of size 26. We could do that, but, uh, you know, we're, we're probably at a point now in the semester where you, you guys know about a better alternative to raw pointers, especially in a case like this. We want to have nodes that clean up after themselves, right? Don't leak memory. So what should I use? What kind of pointer should I use here? Smart pointer, okay. Which kind of smart pointer? Shared pointer or unique pointer? Shared pointer is used when you want to have two people pointing at the same node. Unique pointer is used when there's only one person pointing at a node. Okay, let's take a look at the, the picture again. For any given node, does it have two parents or does it have one parent? got one pair. So unique pointer is the correct smart pointer to use here. Now you can use shared pointer and it'll work. But um, what you're telling people is that you want to make copies of this pointer. And the reality of the situation is you, you don't actually. Um, there is only going to be like not not just a copy of the pointer. You want to have multiple people owning this pointer. So two different people are responsible for deleting this thing. And so both of those people have to go away for you know, the letter S to die or something like that. And that's the wrong ownership model. There's only one person who owns this S here and it is root, right? So when root goes away, we want to call, we want to kill S, right? And when S goes away, we want to kill E. There cannot be any other owner of E other than S, right? There's no double parenting. This is a single parent family with 26 kids, okay? <laughs> See you, Ben. Right. So, um... So we want to use a unique pointer here. Right. 
a unique pointer to node. Uh, and, and sometimes I, I will use shared pointer because I'm lazy, but uh, that's you know not a good thing. Right. The, correct, the correct ownership model here is unique pointer because there's one person who owns that memory. And then when that owner goes away, the child goes away. Okay. Cool. And all of these will be initialized to null pointer. So we're good. So that's in the private section. In the public section, we need to have a constructor. Oh, we also need to have a unique pointer called root. Root is equal to null pointer. And uh, we'll just have a constructor that does nothing. And uh, do we want to ever copy the try? Probably not. So uh, the, yeah, we don't need to do a destructor. Um, I'll delete the assignment operator. I'll delete the const uh, copy deleted copy constructor. No try t equals t2, whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. So I don't see any time that I'd be duplicating it, so I'm just going to delete them as just a safety precaution, um, even though all the all the things would work um, properly, which was which is to say it wouldn't compile at all. So we got all this. So uh, what, what do we need? We need like an insert function, right? Insert const string stir. We'll just call it s for short. And search stub it out. Okay. So. Um, hmm. So now we need to actually do the try. All right. So we're going to be taking a string, and what we're going to do is we're going to build this tree. Right. So we're going to start with a pointer at root, and like let's say let's say we get um, hello. All right. If we get hello passed in, then what happens is it will make a child for H. If it doesn't exist, then moves to H. That makes sense, right? So, like, if we if we have here our our try, you know, maybe this is the place we're at right now, and the user says insert hello. All right. Well, do we have an H child from root? You know, we'll start here. Temp will start here. We'll create a pointer, and it's going to kind of work its way down. So, do we have an H child from root? Yes or no? True or false? What do you guys think? Nope. Okay, so we need to make it. So we go to whatever element h is, right? We go to that spot and we make a child for h. Now remember, h isn't actually written down anywhere. Uh, we're just calling it h here because it's the h, the eighth uh, element, seven, the eighth element um, in the array. You have an array of you know twenty six pointers, right? And the eighth one is going to now be set to a new a new node. And then we move temp to that new node. And then we do one for E, and then for L, and then for L, and then for O, right? I'm not going to draw these things out, but maybe I am. Okay. So that's that's what we're going to do. So if the node exists, you move to it. If it doesn't exist, you make it, and you move to it, right? So if we typed in sat, we would start off here. Does S exist? Yes. Okay, move to it. We don't have to do anything. Does A exist off this? No. So make it. All right. Move to it. Does T exist? No. Make it. Move to it. All right. So it's pretty simple code. Uh, you check to see if the H node exists. If it does, you move to it. If it doesn't, you make it and move to it. And then when you get to the last letter, then you um, mark it as a leaf and up update the count. Uh, how do you know when to put a semicolon at the end of a... Uh, it comes at the end of every struct in class. Every time you make a struct or a class, there's a semicolon at the end. Don't put it anywhere else or you're going to be 
horribly surprised. Like if you put a semicolon after an if statement, right, then if true, do nothing. <laughs> Warning, if statement has an empty body. Yeah, because Python programmers especially have trouble with that because they never know where to put a, a semicolon. Okay, after main, no, not after main. Main's not a class. Only after class and struct definitions. Okay, um, all right, so let's do this. All right, thank you very much. All right, so uh, we've got 26 kids. They're all initialized to null by default, roots null by default. Uh, actually, we probably, yeah, we, let's just make a root. Because if you look at the uh, data structure here, you can see by default, um, there is always a root node that doesn't really represent anything. It just kind of represents the beginning of the string. Okay, so we're gonna start off by just making a, um, making a root pointer always. So we always have a root. We don't have to worry about root not being true. It'll just exist. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna parse the string. So one uh, character at a time, we are going to read a character out of the string. If it's not a al um, alpha, you know, if it's not a uh, letter, we just discard it, move along. We figure out which bucket to go into by subtracting capital A from it. So why am I doing that? What is the uh, what is what is C minus single quote A doing? What is what is the point of that? Yep. So single quote A is sixty five, correct? So why am I why am I subtracting sixty five from the character that we're processing? It takes between zero and twenty five, right? So instead of starting at uh, array element sixty five, we're starting at array element zero. Okay, and so uh, we're gonna go to that index in the, uh, we've got 26 kids, so the first one, index zero, is capital A. So if we have encountered uh, capital H, then we go to the bucket corresponding to H, and we basically just say, if it doesn't exist, then we make it, and then move on with our lives, okay? And if we ever get to the end of the string, which we will eventually for O, whichever, uh, whichever pointer uh, we just made for O, is going to be marked as a leaf, and then we update the count by one, and we're done. And so that is um, constructing a try. Okay. And uh, you can see how often I use weak pointers, which is not very often. Uh, void insert, uh, and then we want to do search const string s. We are now going to loop through the um, the try, and uh, now we don't void it. We want it to be boolean, all right? And so what we want to do is uh, return true if it's a a word in our try. Okay. And what we could we could do another one for like substring matching. So like maybe return, uh, you know, if you give a partial, you know, like for auto completion on a smartphone. So you can type in like the first three letters of a string and it returns the string most likely. That could, that could be kind of fun, but let's just do this for now. Um, so let's do true or false is this word in the dictionary, okay? So it's gonna be pretty similar. So um, shared pointer and shared pointers allow you to duplicate the pointer. Um, I was wrong earlier about weak pointers allowing you to duplicate a unique pointer. It does not allow that, even though should in my opinion but who cares so uh so we're going to duplicate a pointer to the root okay and so same loop as before we are going to uh, iterate across every letter in the string in fact i can probably just copy most of this code y shift five and paste okay so we're so if we're going down the tree and we encounter a null pointer, right? So let's say that we got our tree here. And we, we typed in send. So it's gonna see, say, hey, does the S pointer exist? If so, move to it. Does the E pointer exist? Yes, if so, move to it. Does the N pointer exist? Yes, move to it. Does the D pointer yet? Move to it. And then if you get to the end of the string, send that you're searching for, you're gonna return true. But if at any point, like if, you, if I search for sat, S-A-T, it would go to S, and then if it tried going to A and it got a null pointer, it'll return false, word not found. And in fact, that's all we really need to do. Um, so if we ever hit a null pointer, 
That means word's not found. So we're just going to return false. And um, yeah, actually, that's, that's it. And so then we, it, you know, if it does exist, we move to it. And we keep doing that once we get to the end of the, um, the word we're searching for. Oh, uh, we didn't. We didn't find any null pointers, so there you go. Uh, actually, no, because it, it, it might not be a leaf, right? So uh, if it's not a leaf, okay. So return temp points to a leaf. Okay. So if it's a leaf, it'll return true. If it's not a leaf, it'll return false. And there you go. There's there's search. So that's just a. Uh, um, Enter a string to insert. Enter a string to search for. Okay. You guys understand the code? So it's going to build this try in phase one. Then in phase two, it's going to do lookups. And it'll tell you if that word exists or not. And anyone want to take any uh, guesses if it will seg fault or not? <laughs> in comparison, yeah, it's fine. I don't care. All right. Anyone? All right, fine. I'll fix it. No one? No one wants to take any bets on whether or not this will work? No one has any confidence in their professor? You will bet a penny. All right. Larry, which way are you betting, Aaron? Are you betting that it will work or that it won't work? It will work. Seg faulting. We got a moment of doubt from doubting Thomas Portnoff. I believe, says Carlos. $1,000 Montoya is betting. Five Doge coins. <laughs> You'll give, give me my vote of confidence. All right. Let's try this. Hello. Seg fault. <laughs> All right, cool. There it is. All right. So um, I did that deliberately, of course. So that we can get experience in debugging site faults, right? So uh, I've compiled it with uh, debugging information on now with dash G, and I'm going to do GDB. And I'm going to hit run, and I'm going to type in hello, and it's seg faulted. Okay. So uh, it in, it died on shared pointer base dot h line twelve ninety four. That's not my code. That's the Standard library that is uh, that is botching the job here. Hmm. What's going on here? So this is equal to something very high up in the stack. S is equal to hello. Let's type backtrace. Find out where we are. So uh, insert on line uh, something in main here. Okay. So let's uh, go up a level and t dot insert main.cc line forty nine. Uh, uh, why is it not showing which line that this is on? So with address sanitizer on, uh, member access with a null pointer of type, struct element type, uh, we have a null pointer dereference. Okay. 
So, uh, do, 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 do. Three line 79, 49. So it's on line 22 that our code is barfing. Okay. Right here. Okay. So if temp points to children, square bracket index equals null pointer. So I'm assuming that temp is null. So how can that be? Because temp is equal to root, and root should always be a thing. So we hit a null pointer, right? Your dear referencing a null pointer. Right. So root is null. Um, Share pointer node temp equals root root. And the constructor is make shared node. Why is that null pointer? Yeah, maybe. There we go. Huh. Is the constructor not getting called? I mean, I, I get that that's being set to null pointer, but how is how is this not? Because this should be overridden by this, right? So let's try to put, let's do this instead. Root shared. Mode. Nothing. Yep. So the uh, this thing here was actually taking place after the body of the constructor, which is kind of odd. So using a chained uh, constructor here constructs this properly. Okay, oh, there you go. Problem solved. Uh, my debugging word is hee hee. All right, uh, so yeah, in, in Unix, if you ever run uh, a command with an exclamation mark, it means run the last command that began with the letters CO. I don't like retyping things myself. Um, GG is an alias for Run the last command that began with G++. Right. CC is actually the name of the compiler, so I can't use that. Okay, anyway. Uh, last, uh, last compile. Run it. Hello. Hell. Hi. Quit. Let's search for Apple. Not found. Hell. Found. Hello. True. H. False. Hi, true, and there we go. So the uh, debugging information can be pulled out there. And so, uh, yeah, there's, uh, you know, in a nutshell, how you can debug strange seg faults and things like that, right? So root was null. I wasn't checking for a null root because it was in my constructor. Uh, the uh, default value up here was somehow taking place after the constructor, which is a bit weird to me, I'll have to think about why that's happening. Um, but if I chain the constructors together like this, then it doesn't call this 
default constructor at all on it. It uses it, it, it uses it this directly. So that solved that problem. But my code was using root without checking for null, right? Because it would was not ever supposed to be null. So uh, then all the rest of it worked fine. Right. Uh, is there an std try class? There is not. And so this here is a, a working try class. Uh, the next thing to do would be like do some like prediction on it, where you like um, type in a substring, and then go th then iterate through the tree down below and find the two kids with the biggest um, counts and things like that. Uh, yeah, we are updating the counts properly. And, uh, and then have them be the prediction, right? So uh, you'd have to make your own, yeah. And, and, and data structures used to be a class in which you learn to make your own data structures. Nowadays, it's more a class of like, here are the data structures, learn to pick the right one and use it in the standard library. Um, yeah, there is no standard library try class. You can probably find existing implementations of tries all over the place. Um, it's pretty simple though, and at a certain point, it's just probably worth knowing how to just make this kind of stuff yourself. Just because whatever you find on the internet is probably going to be way over engineered and way, way more than what you need. So if you only need capital letters, so to speak, you know, you don't care about uppercase and lowercase, then, you know, you can do it this way. Uh, yeah, let's do a little prediction. I mean, we're out of time. If anyone wants to leave, go for it. But I, let, let's, let's, it'll be fun, right? Let's, let's find, let's find the, um, the most, uh, just one child, let's say, that has the highest count from our current point. So this should be fun. String predict, not string by reference s. So uh, we're going to return, like if they type in h, it'll return in hello or hi or something like that, but not salmon, because salmon doesn't start with h. So find the child with the highest count uh, with s as a prefix. All right, so start by just returning empty string just to get the thing to shut up. <laughs> All right, so our code's going to be pretty close to search, right? And rather than, like, if we ever go off the edge of the tree or something like that, rather than returning false, we'll just return empty string, right? So we'll just, uh, we'll just start off here. And bloop. So rather than returning false, we'll return empty string if there's nothing there. And uh, here, though, we need to search through the tree for the child with, for the leaf, with the highest count, okay? So this is gonna be a binary search, or equivalent, but binary search, 26 kids, right? So uh, for each child that's not null, we're gonna have to go through it and look for the child with the highest thing. So, uh, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> And so we're gonna do like a recursive, recursive search or something. Okay. Um, node reference pop equals recursive search. Uh, passing in. Okay, so we're going to pass a pointer to part of the tree, and we're going to go recursively through it and return a... Eh, we can do a pointer also, I guess. It's fine. A reference. When you do a reference like that, it's essentially the same thing as a pointer. Eh, we'll just do a shared pointer or whatever. Um, shared pointer node top. That's our best, something like that. Um, so we'll, we'll return the child that has the highest count. Okay. And so now we just need to write this function here. And we'll put in the private section because uh, main doesn't need to know about it. Shared pointer node best equals recursive search. Yeah, okay. So it's going to be returning a shared pointer. It's called recursive search. And it's going to take in a shared putter node. Yeah. Just like that. 
Okay, so uh, to do a recursive search, we're going to search in the left tree, we're going to search our value, and we're going to search the right subtree. Okay, so, um, yeah. Check for null first. Temp equals null putter, return null putter. Okay, and then we'll just do shared pointer node left. So that's the best the best value in our left tree, then there's us, then there's the best value in the right tree. So we'll do a recursive search, passing in, uh, oh shoot, now this is a binary tree, right? Um, hmm. Okay, we have to do a for loop. <laughs> All right, so So we'll start off with a pointer to us, and then if we ever find a pointer to somebody better, then we return that instead. Okay, so we have to do a for loop here. It's not a binary tree. So for if i equals zero, i is less than 26, i plus plus, is that a magic number? Yes, it is. Constant size equals 26. If um, children score bracket i, yeah, we just recursively call on it, I guess. Because we're, we're doing a null pointer check here. So we'll just say uh, shared pointer mm, candidate for best, I don't know, is equal to recursive search children's for bracket i. So we're going to go through every child, right? All 26 children. If it's null, then it just returns null. And if it if it doesn't, then we're going to see if that candidate for best picture, sorry, for the highest count is better than our, our current best. Right. So uh, if candidate is not null, then um, if candidate points to count is greater than best points to count, then best equals candidate. All right, so we're going to go through all 26. If we ever find somebody in our children who has a count higher than us, then that's our current best. And then we go through the more, oh, we found somebody else bigger. That's our current best. So you're going to sweep through all 26 children. And that's a recursive search. So it's going to recursively go through the whole tree, all 26 children, and uh, update the, the best of the best out of all of them. And um, if none of the, if all the kids are null, then it's just going to return our count, or it's going to return a pointer to us, right? Right, that's us. So if all the kids are null, then it's just going to uh, uh, just return a pointer to itself. Okay, let's return best. Okay, so that is a recursive algorithm that will search for the node deep within the tree that has the highest count. And, um, yeah, okay. So yeah, uh, string s equals read, enter a string q four. He's max heap here. Uh, let's see what I got here. In values and non static. Okay. 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 actually building up the string at all. Uh, we're only <laughs> this is returning a pointer to the best. Oh, shoot. Um, yeah. Okay. We're not actually getting the string out of this. We're getting a pointer to the node that has the highest count, 
Um, but we're not actually building the string up as we go along. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hmm. The current, you know, I'm just going to return the count for now. <laughs> so we're already we're already over time, so I'm just going to return best points to count and show you guys how to build up the string later. Uh, all right. uh, da -da -da -da. count was four. Okay, so we had four hellos. So there you go. It all works. Uh, the uh, the trick to getting the string back out of a try though is that you as you go down the try you record the indice like you know you record that you went to uh, um, you know we're on index five which is letter A B C D E F right. So as you go down you build up a string and then you're gonna have to pass that back out as well. And that would involve changing the function signature, which, you know, like we're already over by 10 minutes. So we'll pick that up next time. Can you put that code into public? Sure. So uh, copy main 3cc into slash public slash try. Triangle testing, no, nah, just try to CC. Okay. So there you go. If you wanna take a look at that, that is in slash public slash try. And uh, what you want to do is uh, study it intensively because you're going to need it for your next homework assignment. But for now, just make sure you get histogramming working. Like I said, it's supposed to be just 10 free points for everybody. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, but kind of giving you the answer already. So that's it for today. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.